uh, report number 355 uh, uh, in compliance with section 138 of the Local Government Act 2001 informing of the Council of Works which are about to commence and in compliance with the Planning and Development Regulations 2001 Part 8 proposal to modify the flood defence seawall. Uh, can I have a, a, a open this report for debate Councillor Moore and can I have a seconder? Uh, is Councillor Keegan. Councillor O'Moore. Yeah, good morning, Mayor. This uh, 355 part eight has been going on for an awful long time. Now, at the last area, North Central Area meeting in December, it was agreed by all the councillors there that we support this uh, part eight. So I'd actually prefer if it went through without debate. I propose it goes through without debate. Good morning. Just to be clear what we're voting on. Um, that's to reduce the wall and to put up the cladding. Because that's not your recommendation, Manager. No, we, we, we have revised the report. The report was circulated, I think, today, yeah. which reflects the, the, what was concluded at the North Central area, yeah. and the, the decision sort reflects that. So if you agree the report now, you're agreeing to do both elements. Thank you. Thanks very much. Against my advice, of course. Mr. Market or there. Just, um, I just want to uh, just declare support for this and ask fellow councillors to support this proposal. It has been, uh, it's been a huge amount of work put into this, as I said at the last council meeting. Uh, we had a long discussion around it, with plenty of opportunity to raise issues at the area committee. Um, and I know there are other other councillors, other areas have other priorities uh, in terms of their areas, and you know we don't need to go on discussing this much longer. So I just want to support the manager has revised the report. He's clearly stated it there um, to effectively reflect Lord Mayor Europe two motions from last month. So I just want to support that revised uh, report, and we just want to get on with it now, get it done, and move on. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. We, we had this discussion at last month's North Central Area Committee meeting, so I won't go over the points that I made in favour of the two recommendations. But just to respond to the notion that somehow we're being reckless here, there was an independent monitoring, uh, an independent uh, body was set up two years ago, December of 2015, to engage uh, with the various uh, constituent parts interested in this particular issue. And it was chaired by Dr. Jimmy Murphy from University College Cork Centre for Marine and Renewable Energy. Now, it seems as if there's some implication here that we're being feckless or reckless here, and it's just not true. Uh, what we're doing here by reducing the wall is uh, accommodating a one in 100 year uh, event, tidal event, rather than a one in 200 year tidal event. So it's hardly been reckless. Uh, nobody is denying in any way, shape, or form, all you have to do is turn on the news or read your newspaper, that climate change is a reality and is going to endanger more and more lives in the years to come, particularly coastal communities, and Ireland has to be uh, much more well prepared than we are currently. But I, I don't think, and I'm kind of interested to see that a lot of the speakers here uh, may not have read all of the, the reports that have been uh, produced over the two years since that. So I would actually appeal to them uh, to listen to the members uh, of their particular groups who are uh, representatives from the North Central Area and to recommend uh, to support the two recommendations to reduce the wall in certain sections that have been uh, recommended and uh, to the recommendation for the cladding on the wall as well. It's been two years, a lot of good work's been put in, and I think the recommendations are solid, they're based on scientific fact, and I think they should be supported, and we need to move on this this evening. Thank you. Well, well, it's not normal to um, bring in councillors a second time, but um, I'll, I'll give uh, Councillor uh, more and I'll file a minute, just a minute each. Yeah, go on, Margaret. Yeah, it, taken on account of what uh, Professor Murray has said, the wall was overbuilt. The wall was built too high, and that's why they want to reduce reduce the height they had agreed with initially. Now, it has never flitted between the causeway and the wooden bridge. And anyhow, it goes into St. Anne's Park, and all the flooding that has been has come out of St. Anne's Park, not from the sea, from St. Anne's Park. There is flooding further down from the wooden bridge towards Fairview, that end, but there has never been flooding from the causeway to the wooden bridge. Go about it. Uh, Councillor Farrell. Yeah, thank you. Now, I suppose I'll, I'll be asking people respectfully to, to, to vote for reducing the wall and for the cladding, but th there is some wrong information, some misinformation. The wall is already built too high. 
It's, it's outside the planning. It's too high. It has to be reduced. So there's money that has to be spent on that. The, the wall spend for reducing it is down at about 230,000. At the last area committee, we asked the council officials to come up with where are the different amounts, because some of it is, as I said, is all, they have to reduce the wall. Some of the wall is too low on the footpath side because uh, it has to be 500 millimetres. So work has to be done on that to correct that anyway. It's possibly nearer 60,000, we, we, we ascertained. And we, the other thing is, it's the, it was the city council's idea. They suggested the 300 millimetre millimeter reduction. It was Declan Wallace that suggested that they agreed. There was a two-year process of engagement, and it was agreed. And as Councillor Lyon said, there was an independent, and we both, both sides agreed to go by the independent, uh, that was a fellow, Dr. Jimmy Murphy, who's the foremost expert on, on flooding defences, and he said this is compliant. We're not going below, we're not, there's no way we'd go outside. And I'd, I'd ask you to, at the end of the day, the ward, the ward councillors are looking for this, and we're looking for your support this time, so thanks very much. Um, as, as I had set the precedent, which I probably shouldn't have done, uh, I'll bring Councillor Murray back in uh, again briefly. Yeah, very briefly, just just to uh, be clear, I just want people to be aware that there has been a huge amount. Of this people are talking about motorists and you know motorist requirement. This is not about motorists. This is about there's been a huge engagement done with local communities from Rohini all the way down the coastline with, and their representatives to try and work this issue through. This is a reflection of the agreement that has been reached with them and with city council engineers and technical and senior officials. And I really want we want to. Dispense with this issue. That agreement is in place. Now is your chance to support it and to move on to other items for this council. I would ask people, as a local representative of the area, to support it. As Councillor Farrell's another has spoken on it, and let's let's get this final bit done and let's move on. Thank you. Okay, the final speaker is uh, Councillor Hogan Jones, and now I bring in the manager. Um, thanks, Arvair. I'll be very brief because I think most of the points have already been made. Um, as my colleagues have said, the six ward councillors are all united and we are voting for the reduction um, in the wall and the cladding as per agreement. And as has been said, um, the issues have moved on. There has been a long engagement encouraged and initiated by the City Council um, to which local residents and community leaders have given voluntarily of their free time in good faith to come to an agreement with the City Council and at no stage um, prior to the report being given to this Council was it indicated that uh, the agreement would be flipped on its head and councillors would be asked to vote um, for the original height. So for that reason and because this City Council should be encouraging residents to engage with us and to negotiate with us and to come to agree positions on it, for that reason I am voting to reduce um, the, the, the height of the wall. Thanks. Councillor Haney, were you indicating? Yes. Yeah. L Lord Mayor, I wasn't going to come in on it because people seem to think that we've spent enough time discussing this matter, but just to clarify two issues. One, it's not true that the cost of this work is costing €300,000. I think it's something less than a third of that figure. Um, and the second <laughs> item is that it isn't about reducing uh, the height to accommodate motorists who should have their eye on the road and I totally agree with a previous speaker who's made that comment but that's not what it's about and there are other people who are walking on the other side of the road or indeed wheelchair users that will be accommodated with the reduction. Thanks Lord Mayor. Okay I just want to bring in the manager now. Um, just, I suppose just to take the questions, Councillor O'Brien's question first. Um, I suppose the allocation of funds of 230,000 to reduce the height of the wall, like there's, limited, like there's a limited fund there, and obviously that, if that wasn't spent on, the, on reducing the wall, it would be spent on another flood relief scheme. Uh, so it would be available for other works. That, that would be the answer to Councillor O'Brien. Um, I suppose the answer to Councillor Cuff and Councillor Montague in, late, in relation to sea level rise, uh, I suppose over the last decade there's been quite a, a bit of work being carried out on sea level rise measurements, uh, particularly in, in, in the Dublin area and other areas. And we're actually finding per annum there's a level, sea level rise is now 67 millimetres per year. Uh, so in a decade you're actually looking at 60 to 70 millimetres of, of a sea level rise. Um, now that's something that has to be constantly monitored and will be monitored over, over years. Um, 
In relation to Councillor Freel's question, um, the design that's been put forward here in, in, the, in the resolution um, is taken account of a one in 100 year event and a sea level rise that will protect the area for a period of 10 to 30 years. After that period, the wall will have to be revisited again. Uh, the, the sea level rises obviously will, will increase during that period of time and we will just have to monitor it. But what, what's, if, the, if the wall is reduced, it will provide a certain amount of protection, but only for that certain period of time, which will have to be monitored. And if anything happened within that period of time, then what's the liability of the council, please? We, we don't know, Councillor Freeland. Like, basically, that's, that's a standard that will protect the area, uh, using all of the, the, the standards that are there, the engineering standards, but it will protect the area for a certain period of time. But it's not, it's not to the national standard. Technical issue. Just on the, the, national standard. The, the national standard, and I suppose it really answers uh, Councillor Moore's question and Councillor Farrell's, is that the wall height that was, is there at the moment and that was designed is actually designed to the national standard, and that is one in 200 year event protection, plus all of the sea level rises that's predicted as well. And that, that is the national standard. Could I just, could I just come in a point of information? You can ask a question, but you've already spoken at length. No, no, just it, it, it is compliant with the um, Dublin City our, our development uh, plan. Question. That's the question. It's, it's compliant with our development plan. That's what I understand. It's in the report that it's compliant with our development plan. The, the, the development in terms of planning, but the, the statement that's been made here is, is mm. it doesn't work. It doesn't comply with national coastal flood protection. That's the design standard we sought to achieve in building the wall. Mm. We're being asked to retreat from that. It's not really a development plan issue. It's, it's national policy. We're putting it before the councils mm. that it doesn't, and it's up. We said we're not recommending you, you reduce it. At the end of the day, it's a matter for the council. We recommend that you don't reduce it. And just, just one more piece of information. Just, if, I, Councillor Farrell, if it's important, if I don't want to be you've spoken at length on this. I let you in twice, which is unusual. So we need to move on. Uh, Deirdre. Okay, then I propose to put the resolution as it is in the report uh, and to put that to vote, which is Dublin City Council hereby approves all the works set out in report number 355-2017 and agrees that they pr uh, proceed subject to the requirements of various City Council departments set out in this report. So if you vote yes to that, you're uh, voting to the, uh, you're agreeing to this report. If you vote no, obviously you're not agreeing. Yes. So a vote yes will reduce the height of the wall. Thank you. So a vote, a vote yes is my understanding it will reduce the height of the wall and include the cladding. We are proceeding the resolution as contained in the report circulated this afternoon. The group agreed yes, Lou. The group agreed yes. Yes. You voted. Oh, yes. Please, yeah, please. Sorry, has everybody seen their, their vote there? Oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry, just so. don't, don't move. Okay. <laughs> I didn't kick anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, okay, I'll scroll through them slowly. So, can everybody check their vote, please? So the uh, report is carried by 34 votes to 21 with three abstentions. Um, so, we'll proceed to, uh, sorry, to the next item.